I've done many videos on programming here on this channel and one video that seems to have been well received is the one about pointers in C. I also have a companion video about malloc, how memory allocation works in C. This video is really the third in the series. It's about how you can use pointers with structures, pointers to structures in the C programming language. We can take a look at what structures are. We can then look at how you can have a pointer to a structure. And then finally, some of the interesting ways that you can use pointers to structures. So if you are learning C, if you're an intermediate C programmer, if you're interested in C programming, this video, I hope, should be useful for you. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. OK, so pointers to structures in C. First question, what is a structure? This is a direct quote from the C programming language, second edition by Kernighan and Ritchie, really no greater authority. So a structure is a collection of one or more variables, possibly of different types, grouped together under a single name for convenient handling. Structures help to organize complicated data, particularly in large programs, because they permit a group of related variables to be treated as a unit instead of separate entities. And we'll dive straight into some code to have a look at that. So here is a very, very simple C program. Uh, this is how you compile it on uh, Linux, for example. Uh, obviously include sdio.h. And here is our structure. It starts with the keyword struct for structure. Then you get its name. In this case, the structure's name is point. And then inside we can see there are two variables, x and y. Both of them are integers. Notice the semicolon here at the end helps all the syntax there. And then in our main program, we say struct points. We're not defining one now, we're defining a variable. So notice there's no curly brackets, struct point P. So P is a, is a structure of type point and it's got two variables inside it, X and Y. And you can see then we do P dot, and this is the way you access a structure in C, P dot X, this one here, 10, P dot Y, 42. And then we do a printf statement, X is, and then we print out a number, Y is, and then we print out a number, what numbers? P dot X and P dot Y. So you know that P dot X is 10, P dot Y is 42. So it doesn't take much to imagine what we will see on the screen. And here it is when you run the program, X is 10 and Y is 42, exactly as we would anticipate. OK, let's just go on to a slightly more complicated example. Uh, struct2 example, all of these will be in my uh, GitHub repository. Just Google Gary Explains GitHub repository and you'll find it straight away. So our same structure defined here. But what I wanted to show here is there's a way of quickly initializing it. So look, struct point P and then we can say 11 and 43. So 11 will go into X, 43 will go into Y and then we'll print out. We're expecting 11 and 43. Let's run it. And so there we have it. X is 11 and Y is 43. Brilliant. OK, now a more complicated example. So we've still got the same structure here, point with X and Y. We define one called P, 12 and 44. And then we define another variable of type structure point, Q. We're not initializing it at all. So it's undefined. And so now P is equal to Q. So this is important. P, the one here which had nothing, is now equal to Q. So what happens is, is that these values get copied into P. So Q is independent, P is independent, and one gets copied into the other. So now if we print out P dot X, so P is the that was the one that was not initialized, and P dot Y, we're expecting 12 and 44. And that's what we get. X is 12 and Y is 44. Now just to emphasize this, let's show you the same thing again. Q has got 12 and 44 in it. P is uninitialized, and we're going to say P is equal to Q. Now here what we're going to do is we're going to increase the P version by one for X and one for Y. So P dot X is equal to P dot X plus one, P dot Y is equal to P dot Y plus one. And then we print out both of those. We've got the Q, and then we've got Q dot X and Q dot Y, and then we've got the P version, P dot X and P dot Y. So what we're expecting, well, we'll expect 12 and 44 for the Q version. And if we're adding one onto them, we're expecting 13 and 45 for the P version. 
This just shows us that P and Q are independent and that you just copy the values from one to the other. So there we go, 12, 13, 44 and 45. So another neat way of using structs, you can wrap a type def around them and create your own type. So type def struct point x and y at the end here, before that semicolon, if you remember there was a semicolon here, I'm putting point under bar t, t, a convention here for type. So now when I use this, I don't need to say struct point, I can just say point under bar t and then p. And I'm back to the same thing, 13 uh, and 45. So this is a convenient way now I've created my own type which is based on a structure so we can have quite a complex set of data in here and i can very easily just create one using uh, p and if you run that we're expecting 13 and 45 x is 13 and y is 45. okay so that's when we've been using structures now just as variables now we get on to our first example of using it with pointers so i've changed the structure slightly point t still as a type def We've got X and Y, but I've also put a character buffer in here, which I'm calling description, short for description 64, 64 uh, bytes long. So we can put some st a string in there. So notice that structures can be quite complex, have different types in them, and now I'm mixing integers and I'm into mixing uh, character buffers in here. So what I'm doing here now, watch this, point T, so that's this type def is, it's gonna be one of these, star P. So this is a pointer to one of those. And I'm casting it to make sure the compiler doesn't complain about everything. And good practice, of course. Memory allocation. Malloc, as I said, do have a video here on the channel all about malloc. If you're not sure how it works, uh, please do watch that video. And then how much memory do I want to allocate? Malloc memory allocate. How much do I want to allocate? Size of a point T. So the size of this structure here. Well, let's add it up. What is it? Well, it's going to be 64 bytes here. And then X is a 32-bit integer, so that's going to be 4. And Y is going to be a 32-bit integer, so that's going to be another 4. So 64 plus 8, well, that gives us 72. Okay, so let's visualize that malloc. So here is memory, for example, up and down. doesn't matter where it is, but we've got this chunk of memory. And what we're saying is we want a section of that memory for our structure point, which has to contain an integer, another integer, and this buffer of 64 of bytes so we know that's 72 and so what we're saying is give us 72 bytes of memory and assign it to the pointer p and then we initialize here now one thing to notice p and now because it's a pointer we don't use dot we use this minus greater than this arrow which shows that you're dereferencing it so the pointer of p dereferencing to give you the variable x we're putting in 14 dereference me to give you y, we're putting the value of 46. String copy, what's the destination? Dereference it to this buffer here, and we copy a point. So now in here, we're gonna have 14, 46, a point with a null zero in it. And now if we try to print it out, x is, we're gonna get 14, y is 46, it is a, a point, that's the text that we put in here, and its size is, and then we're printing out bit of a fudge maybe, but we're casting the size of here to an integer and just printing it out. So we're getting the size, so that should be 72. And the final thing to note before we run this is we need to free P afterwards. So for every malloc, you need to free. So we've invested memory from the system and we need to free the memory. Again, look at my malloc pro uh, example video for more details about that. Okay, so let's run it and see. And here we go, x is 14, y is 46, it is a A point, that was our uh, description, and its size is 72, exactly as we would uh, expect. So I've got a slightly different program here, along with this malloc here, which we know makes P point to this 72 bytes in memory, we're gonna create another pointer of the same type, Q, that's not initialized. And again, we can go ahead and initialize uh, P, and then we can print it out. So we should get exactly the same as last time, 14, 46, a point and 72 bytes. Now here I'm doing Q is equal to P. Now this is different to what we did earlier. Now earlier P and Q were actual variables and when you did P is equal to Q, it copied. Now P and Q are actually uh, pointers. So we're just saying that Q is the same pointer as P. And so now 
P and Q both point to that same 72 bytes because we've made these two equal. We haven't copied these 72 bytes. We haven't duplicated them anywhere. We're just saying the pointer. Give me another copy of the pointer because that's what I've assigned one pointer to the other. Very different to if we weren't using a pointer. And now what I'm going to say is Q of X is equal to 15 and Q of Y is equal to 47. Well, if we take Q, follow the arrow, that's what we're dereferencing, follow the arrow into here and set 15 and 47, we're going to change the memory in here. So we're actually changing the same thing that P is pointing to because it's the same bit of memory. So it doesn't matter if we follow the arrow to P or follow the arrow to Q, we're talking about the same chunk of memory. So in fact here, if I print out P of X and P of Y, even though I modified Q of X and Q of Y, what am I going to get out? Well, I'm actually going to get out 15 and 47. Now, the thing is, you must free uh, P. You mustn't free Q. I've put that in there and commented out. No, because it's just a copy of the pointer. If you try to free this memory, that memory would disappear. And then you try to free it again, that's a double free. That's actually an error, uh, a bug in your code. We don't need to free Q. All Q is is a copy of the same pointer that P is. So what we're going to get when we run this, we're going to get 15 and 47. One printout with it at 14 and 46, then a second printout with it at 15 and 47. So there you go, 14 and 46, that's the first printout. Then we modify that block of memory using Q as the pointer, and now we get 15 and 47. Now, structures are great for passing around two functions. So look, I've got this uh, little function here called point factor two. Uh, basically, it multiplies what's inside of a point, the X and the Y by two. So what do we do? We pass in a pointer, and we're calling it locally a point. It's of type point T that we define up here. And we say a point X is equal to a point X multiplied by two. And a point Y and a point Y multiplied by two. So it doubles the value of X and it doubles the value of Y. Back into our main code, we do that memory allocation as before. We initialize it. And look how, how just neat this is. Point factor P. So we're now just sending in this P. It's going to do all this stuff. And when it comes out of here, it's going to have changed. So... This is different than maybe what you've done, depending on your level, of course, of C program. You may have expected when you call a function, it returns something and you would have done something over here, you know, is equal to X is equal to, you know, whatever is the thing. Here, because we're passing in a pointer, we're saying work with that area of memory. This will work with that area of memory, doubling it in this fact. And when we come out of here, it would have changed. So we, when we print out here P of X and P of Y, we're not expecting 14 and 46. We're expecting 28 because it's been doubled. So let's run that and see. So here you can see X is, is 28 and Y is 92 because we doubled the values in there by passing in the pointer to the structure. OK, one more ex example. So here we've got point add where you pass in two points, A and B, and we add them to each other. So... Look here, A of X is going to be A of X plus B of X. Okay, so whatever is in A of X is going to get added to what's in B of X, and they're going to get assigned to B of X. And A of Y is going to be equal to A of Y plus B of Y. Now, notice I've put this in again here. No, you can't do this. You can't then say B of X is equal to zero. Why? Because I've defined this one here to be a constant. So I'm protecting it, if you'd like to look at it that way, to say that this is read-only. So I can pass in these two points. This one won't change. This one will. So once this uh, function is run, point A will have changed and point B will remain the same. If you actually try to uncomment that, run the code, it won't work. OK, so what do we do here? P1 is we've got a malloc. And P2 is just our normal way. No star here. We're not doing a malloc. We're just doing a normal variable, 10, 20, and another point. We initialize here P1. So P2, of course, is already initialized. P1, 14, 46, A point. And now here's the beauty of again. Look, point add P1. And then we want, and what do you want to add to it? P2. But notice here we say the address of. That's what the ampersand means. The address of P2, because this is just a normal variable. We haven't allocated it with malloc. It's not a pointer, just a normal variable. The address of P2. So these both end up being pointers. They get passed into here as pointers. This one remains the same, doesn't change, and A of X gets modified, A of Y gets modified. So when we print out now X is and Y is, P1 of X and P1 of Y 
it's going to be these two added together. So it's going to be 10 plus 14 and 20 plus 46. And then don't forget, then you need to free P1 because you allocated it with a malloc. You don't need to free P2. That's just a normal variable, just like an int or a float or a boolean, whatever you defined. The compiler takes care of all that, probably on the stack, maybe on the heap. Not an issue for you to worry about because you didn't ask for that memory. The compiler handles all of that, but you did ask for this memory explicitly, so you have to free it. Okay, let's run the program. What are we going to get? Okay, so there you go. X is 24, so that's 10 more than 14, and Y is 66, that's 20 more than 46. Okay, so there you have it, pointers to structures. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any ideas about other videos you would like to see on programming, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.